Hello and welcome to part 3 of the tutorial on how to install Mac OS X 10.5.8 on Dell Design 1545. To start this, restoring Windows, you're going to need a retail disk. Like this one. That matches your Windows version, 64 bit or 32 bit. Obviously, I have real Windows 7 here. going to need to use a restore feature. It's hard to do this one half. Okay. I got the disk. Put that over there. Okay. So now what you're going to want to do, eject your CD drive. As you can see, I had our echoes in there from before. Just take that out, throw it to the side. Put your Windows 7 disk in. Okay. It'll load up in a second, but now we don't need this anymore. Let's shut down and reboot. I actually want it to shut down. I reboot, but that's alright. Put it back on. F12, 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 F12. Boot from CD. Press the key. Boot from Windows 7 disk. Now Windows is loading the files. And don't worry, we're not reinstalling Windows. We're only restoring it. I know that some OEM companies give restore disks. I'm not sure if those would work. You might need to make a recovery disk of your current Windows installation because it will give you the recovery tools. And you can Google out, Google how to make a recovery disk. Right? Uh, I think there's even a couple of people that just provide ISO images of them for your Windows version whatnot. But basically this works for the retail disk and some OEM disks that actually let you install Windows. Not restore, like, um, how do I put it? You get rid of everything and then you put all their junkware and Windows on. Those type of disks might not work. It just depends on the type of disk. The safest way to go is with one of these. A retail disk. 100% works with this. If you need to torrent one just for, oops, if you need to torrent one just for this, and you're not using it for illegal installation, that should be okay. All right, I'm gonna pause this because it's not anywhere near done. It'll take about five minutes. It is very close to finishing. And on another side note, this also works with Windows Vista. It's the exact same process. It does not work with Windows XP, which is why you really can't dual boot Windows XP with Mac OS X. Unless you had a Windows 7 or Windows Vista installation. This is the reason why. Not with this method, at least. I mean, there are ways, but not with this. So, it's booting from the disk. And here's the install. We're not installing. I repeat, we are not reinstalling or reformatting. Choose your language and time cur your currency format and keyboard. I go with standard. Now, do not hit install now. We do not want that. Go to the corner and click repair your computer. It will load a bunch of repair tools. I mean, it, it's doing this for me now. It, it wouldn't look for it. It wouldn't find your Windows installation for you if you just installed OS X. Mine's okay. But, No, that's only because of the bootloader. Now, use recovery tools that can help fix problems. Now what you want to do is open the command prompt. Whoops, I don't want to open it twice. And what you're going to want to do 
is type disk part bear with me here I have to um, I have to type with one hand okay now the disk partitioner or whatever it is is loaded so you type a list disk this would be mine disk zero which is like 300 gigabytes or whatever it is list list ah. list part which is list oops sorry my bad cell disk Zero. You want to select disk zero because that's the hard drive OS X is installed on. And Windows 7 for that matter. Now you do list part, which will list all the partitions. So you see four of them. That's the Windows 7 default partition that it makes. That's my recovery partition, the 14. 253 is Windows 7. 29 is Mac OS X. Okay, so now you want to select the Windows partition. So, or you can do cell part X. X would be anything Windows 7 installed, any drive. For example, mine is 3, so you would select partition 3. See that? 253 is my window 7, that's partition 3. Select partition 3. So now it's the selected partition. And then what you're going to want to type is active. So it sets it to active. I'm not going to do this because it, it's going to mess up my bootloader because I already have it configured correctly. But I will. I'm gonna, uh, I'll pretend I'm hitting enter. So you hit enter and it'll just be set to active. Then what you're going to want to type is exit after you hit enter for active. Hit enter again. Well, I'll hit exit because I don't, yeah, it won't do anything. So you exit disk partition. And then you close that in the command prompt. And you can restart. Once again, you will not see this bootloader right now. It might boot into Windows 7. Okay? It might. If it does not boot right now into Windows 7, that's okay, because there is another thing you can do to make sure it boots into Windows 7. Now, what you're going to want to do is go back into... If it doesn't boot. If it boots, you're in good shape. You're good. But if it doesn't boot, what you're going to want to do is cancel out of that. F12, F12, F12. Boot from the disk again. I know, this will take a while. But you're going to want it to boot from the disk again, and then it will... Press any key. It'll tell you that there's a problem with your current setup. And then you're going to want to fix it. Alright, I'm going to pause this. This will take forever. Alright, so finally, boot it up. Do the same thing as before, go to repair your computer. Now it'll give you a notification this time. Like I said, last time when I booted it, it gave me a notification. I, I don't have to worry about it, that's only because Mac OS X is in the bootloader. Because it's configured properly. Windows doesn't recognize it, whatever. This time you'll see something. And it's searching for the Windows installation. It'll find your Windows installation this time, because last time it wouldn't have. And you're going to want to click repair and restart. Although I'm not because, well, I already just said, I don't want to mess up Mac OS X. So now you click repair and restart, and I'm going to click no because I just said why. And that's it. It'll restart. I'm going to exit out because I don't need this anymore. You're done with this. This time it'll boot into Windows 7 for sure.
still won't see the bootloader, but that's what we're going to configure next. You won't see this yet. I'm going to configure it right now. I already have it, but that's okay. I'll add another one and I'll show you. Now I just have to wait for my windows to load. Okay. So you open your web browser. Hopefully it's Google Chrome or Firefox and not IE, but I'm not going to worry about that. Search Easy BCD. It is a free program. Even though it says for this, that's only for commercial use. If you sneak to the bottom, is it the bottom? Right here. Download for free, limited non commercial use. You might want to, you could put your, in, in, you could put your name and email in there, but you don't have to, you can leave it out. Click download. Alright, I don't need it, because I already have it installed. So, now you're going to want to run it. I have the latest version, it looks like, that's good. I just ran it from the start menu, and our camera cut off a little. It's loading, I promise you. Here's the program. This is the Windows bootloader. Where you see this is my boot menu right here. The one I've had the whole time. So you're gonna to wanna to hit is add new entry. Right here, add new entry. Now you'll see this. Go over to Mac. Yeah. What the heck? Oh I bet. Okay. Um, now you'll see NTS, Mac OS X, and EFI. You have to change that to MBR, because this is not a vanilla Mac OS X we installed. And I recommend changing that to Leopard, or something like that. Fail. Ah, jeez. Alright, finally. Okay. So the Mac OS X Leopard. 10.5 pennant. You can put that there too, but I'm not going to. Now what you do is go over here. So once you click add entry to this, you're good to go. I'm not going to though. And now your bootloader is successfully configured and you've successfully installed Mac OS X 10.5.8 bootloader and all the drivers need, or texts needed on Dellen's Byron 1545. Finally, the bootloader I've been showing you the whole time will be your finished product. Thank you for watching this tutorial and if it helped you, subscribe, please. Every subscriber counts. Epic music. And there you are.